The less movement through the home buying process, the, the better. better for the buyer. Hello everyone, this is Juliana Damkwe, your real estate expert here from Century 21 Excel Realty. There are many moving parts to a real estate transaction with different professionals working together to bring the transaction to a successful close. Our goal in this video today is to find out the role they play in bringing you home. In a real estate transaction consists of the following. A real estate agent, an attorney, a lender, a, a home inspector, an appraisal, an insurance agent. Today we have Nick Paleologos from Envoy Mortgage. And Nick is a lender and he's been doing lending for over 20 years. He comes here with a lot of experience and our office are lucky to have been working with Nick for so many years. So Nick is going to break down the role the lender plays in the real estate transaction. Hello, Nick. How are you today? I'm good, Julie. How are you? Good, thank you. And we're, we're also lucky to be working with you guys. Okay, it's we're excited a, to have you here with us today. A good, mm -hmm. maybe five or six years we've been yeah, working yeah. together and it's been uh, fruitful for everybody and mm -hmm. we've enjoyed the relationship. So, okay. thank you for inviting me back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I'd like to do is just spend a few minutes talking mm -hmm. about the lending process and sort of how we fit into the puzzle of home ownership. Okay. Um, I don't know if you had any introductory questions, but I did want to just give a couple mm -hmm. highlights regarding 2022 on the lending front. One sort of stumbling block in, in central Massachusetts has always been um, the government agencies limited loan sizes. Okay. They're starting to come around and we're seeing in 2022 that the maximum loan sizes for both conventional loans and government loans mm -hmm. has increased. Okay. So it's allowing us to avoid putting customers in jumbo loans, which makes lending easier in general. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, as a highlight, the conforming loan limits for a single family home in 2022 uh, is six hundred forty-seven thousand two hundred dollars. Right. That's a significant jump from well, what last did you year. Used to be, I think, in twenty twenty-one, we we're at five forty-eight. Okay. So that's a nice move upward. Um, so we can fit a lot more home buyers into that category without moving into a jumbo product. Awesome. <clears throat> two families and three families, eight hundred thousand and one million. Oh. So for the, that, the, those price points, you know, there's usually not mm -hmm. any issue in central Massachusetts. Exactly. FHA, which a lot of a large pool of our customers fit into, um, has also increased its loan limits. The single family home okay. loan is up to four hundred twenty thousand. Okay. Um, the two families up to five hundred thirty-eight thousand, and the three family um, six hundred fifty-one thousand. Wow. So really, if you're buying a property in Central Massachusetts, uh, multifamily especially, you can fit it into either a conventional or a government product without worrying about jumbo. So we, we like the, the background about what's going on in 2022. Definitely it's going to help more people uh, to avoid the jumbo loan. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, someone comes to you and what is the pre-approval process? Sure. Mm -hmm. So our objective is to work in conjunction with the real estate agent, the uh, attorney and title company involved and to make sure that the process for a homeowner is clean and smooth. So two things can happen. Either a customer or a potential borrower will come to us directly or they'll come to us through one of our referral partners like, like Julie in Century 21. Mm -hmm. um, Julie will call up, say, hey, so-and-so is looking to get pre-qualified and we'll set up an appointment and sit down and go through the first steps of this process. And really what we're trying to do is review all of their financial profile as thoroughly as possible at the beginning of the process. So when I say financial profile, there's really three components to this. The first thing we want to do, we, we always take an application on all of our customers, which covers all their personal information, their living history, their work history, you know, who are they and how are they, what kind of risk are they going to be for the bank? Because ultimately banks are lending money based on risk. So. We take an application, 
and uh, we will review their credit profiles together. And you know, at Envoy, at least, um, our programs start with a 580 minimum credit score or higher. So as long as you meet that threshold, we will look at um, different programs to see what we can fit you into. Regarding credit, obviously the higher the credit score, the more opportunity you have to access different programs um, within the conventional world, jumbo world, government worlds. And, um, you know, ideally the top or premium credit um, bucket is 740 or better. Every 20 points lower under 740 will, mm -hmm. you, you know, usually hit you on the interest rate okay. um, or bump you out of certain types of programs. Okay. So we evaluate the credit profile and even if it's not in a position to um, pursue financing at that moment, we will mm -hmm. figure out what you need to do to correct and improve it so that we have a loan for you at some point in the future. So we never turn someone away. Okay. Every customer that comes to the doors, we figure out a plan for them. Okay. Um, so credit is, is step one. The second thing we analyze is their income documentation. We typically want to have a two year work history. It's not mandatory, but um, most of the time the programs call for a two year work history well, where um, even if they've changed jobs, we want to know that they've, had, they've been working for two years. Um, if they haven't, maybe they were in school and they started their first job or a medical situation, they went back to work or maternity and they've gone back to work. There's many different situations that come up as exceptions, but in general, um, the banks and the government agencies want to ensure that you have um, a two year work history or longer. We'll analyze your financial documents. Um, we'll figure out depending on how you're paid, what we can use within each program's guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we have the credit, we have the income, and the third piece is the assets. What are you gonna have available for a down payment? Every program, government, conventional, jumbo, requires some type of minimum. The beauty of lending today is that mm -hmm. we have a lot of programs that are between zero and 5% down. So there's a lot of opportunity for a first time home buyer or a repeat home buyer who's gonna occupy their property to um, take advantage of a low down payment. So within the pre-approval process, we'll narrow things down to, we'll tailor them to suit what the individual is looking for. Um, sometimes someone initially is thinking they wanna buy a single family home, but maybe they don't qualify for enough to achieve that goal, maybe they decide, well, I'll start off with a three family or a multi-family mm -hmm. and be a, be a landlord for a while and live in that space. And then once my, whatever was lacking in their profile has strengthened, they move on to a, to a second uh, opportunity. And mm -hmm. so we, we try to structure things initially around their goals, but we wanna make sure that they're comfortable with their scenario. And if they don't qualify, maybe there's some alternative direction we can look at. Um, so those are sort of the three pieces of the financial puzzle that we review with a customer. Um, once we've completed that, we present them with some loan options and um, then a pre-approval letter. They need that pre-approval letter to start shopping uh, with the real estate agent. So that's when they come back to us. And that's when they come back to you. We, we help them find a house. And um, after they find a house, then they come back to you. Correct. So how does that process start? So, you know, the real estate agent has set up a relationship with the, the home buyer. They've been pre-qualified with us at the bank. Um, we've, we've issued their pre-approval letters. They, they're shopping around. You find them a property, an mm -hmm. offer is accepted, and then we get back involved at that point. Uh, that upfront piece is the most important piece of the financial side of things because it's a, we verify that they qualify for something. Once they found it, it's more you know a process moving through the steps to make sure that the property itself is um, of value and things like that. So once the offer is accepted, um, the real estate agent will, <coughs> will send us a copy of the offer, and we will prepare something called initial loan disclosures. Basically a package of documents discussing their personal information, the information on their application, 
um, the terms of the loan they're going to be receiving, uh, what the monthly payment's gonna be, how much money they need for the transaction. We get into the details of that specific transaction at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, the customer will sign the disclosures and then we at the bank will submit our file to our underwriting department for the official approval. Sometimes we will um, submit a file to underwriting earlier on in the process if we're concerned. If we are very comfortable with their profile, we'll give the pre-approval letter for them to shop without taking that step. So a lot of people will say, well, what's the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval? Mm -hmm. A, a pre-approval technically is not only us reviewing the profile, but also underwriting yeah. department, stamping it. Right. And we often, over the years, we've done that, you know, multiple times, many times consistently. But um, if we feel comfortable and based on our experience, if, mm -hmm. if we are comfortable giving out the pre-approval letter mm -hmm. as is, then we don't bother with that stuff. Um, that's just, you know, some people might be concerned about that, but our, I would say our funding rate at Envoy is very high once we start a transaction with someone. Yeah, exactly. Unless something extraordinary happens, we usually can sort of direct them properly. In between, when we've disclosed the loan, there's a, there's a period of time where the borrower will have a home inspection. Mm -hmm. The real estate agent, you'll take them out to the, to the property or and meet with a home inspector, make sure the home is okay, and we get to the purchase and sales contract. Mm -hmm. That's where the attorney's piece would, start, would, would develop. Mm -hmm. um, for us, we typically order an appraisal which will clarify the value of the property. We basically want the appraisal to say that the home is safe, that the home is valued at least at what the purchase price is negotiated at, and um, that there are no hazards. Uh, so that third party inspection takes place uh, or ordered at the time in between when the offer is provided to the bank or when the purchase and sales contract is signed. That is the major piece after pre-approval that the bank needs to confirm that this property is worthy of um, financing, okay. right? We already know the borrower is, borrower is through the pre-approval, mm -hmm. now the home is through the appraisal. Okay. Um, so the appraiser checks safety and value. Safety and value, yep. Okay. Uh, marketability. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll pull comparables to make sure that uh, the home that the borrower is purchasing mm -hmm. um, makes sense within that neighborhood and market. And you know, in markets like we're in right now where there's huge demand, mm -hmm. value prices go up, mm -hmm. negotiations are pushed over initial starting points, mm -hmm. and it makes things complicated, which right. you know, for the bank and for the homeowner and for the real estate agents involved. So. Right. It's just a little bit more of a complex market right now. So the, the appraisers uh, have been hard time appraising lately or it's good? I think in general, the market conditions have been fair. Um, there have been a percentage of appraisals that are coming in under negotiated value. Okay. And so when that occurs and everybody feels that the report is fair, mm -hmm. um, a few things could take place. Maybe there's a renegotiation of the purchase price. Maybe there's maybe the buyer and the seller meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's an escalation clause in the original contract, which will um, have the buyer pay the difference between the price value and what the offer was. Mm -hmm. Right? All these different sort of tools we use now when the market's yeah. really hot. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys care if a buyer is? Pay more than their appraised value as long as they have their own money. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. Um, so we don't care um, as long as the <clears throat> buyer confirms in writing that they're comfortable paying the difference over the appraised value. Okay. So the bank will always use either the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever is lower, okay. in, in terms of structuring the details of the transaction. Okay. Um, but if a borrower, you know, in a high demand market is willing to pay extra for the property, we're okay with that. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So uh, after the purchase and sale and all, and the appraisal comes in okay, mm -hmm. now we're going to the closing table. Yeah, so the appraisal comes back, the value is good, um, the title report has arrived from the uh, attorney's office. Uh, we put all these pieces together, we send them all up in, in other conditions that the, the borrower is responsible for, maybe a pay stub, a bank statement, any miscellaneous things. Everything is time sensitive with the lending side of, of, of 
of the process. So um, as time goes on, we have to update financial documents. Okay. We update financial documents, title, appraisal, their homeowner insurance is in, everything's sent up. We clear the file with underwriting. At that point, it's called a clear to close or final commitment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And then we're ready to schedule. We're ready to schedule the closing. Um, we inform all the parties involved. We try to stay in communication throughout the process with our referral partners, with the borrowers, with the attorneys, and so that we're all on the same page and uh, the process moves mm -hmm. smoothly. There's nothing worse, I don't think, yeah. than people getting frustrated when they're buying their home. So once you hear the clear, it means everything is okay or something can happen? Usually when we issue the clear to close, <laughs> we're ready to go oh, and we can okay. close within 48 hours. Oh, okay. um, at that point, we'll set up a closing date with the buyers and seller sides. Mm -hmm. We will start preparing um, a final package and then once the final numbers have been prepared between buyer and seller, we present those to the buyer to make sure they know how much they need for their final mm -hmm. check and that all of the final terms are the way they anticipated. And there's no surprises, like you said. Mm -hmm. Surprises are never, never. pleasant. <laughs> yeah, there's certain exceptions. Because I mean, the last minute title issue that can come up, but the lawyers are there to handle those. Um, but mainly, your your part is to make sure they underwrite and everything goes well based on the appraisal. Correct. Um, I want to make sure that that customer stays focused, doesn't do anything, doesn't leave the zone, the buying zone while they're in process. Don't open up any um, unnecessary credit debt. Don't purchase a car. Don't change jobs. That happens a lot mid process and that becomes frustrating for everybody because then we need to order a fresh verification for their new job and make sure the terms of their new position meet the ratio requirements that we had calculated at the beginning of the pre-approval. So, the less movement through the home buying process, the better, the better for the buyer. So the buyers, there is a lending zone that you have to be in. <laughs> the lending zone, yeah. <laughs> if, you too, right if you move too, too much left, there will be a problem. If you move too much right, another. That's you right. Stay within the zone That's and right. make sure you get your keys. Once you have your keys, you don't have to deal with anyone. Right, then you go but back until to... then, stay in the zone. Yeah. All right, that is very helpful and thank you for letting us know the role that you play in bringing people home. And so if you're looking for information on Nick, Nick is on Park Avenue yep. and we'll leave more information in the uh, write up so we can be able to reach Nick. Um, Nick, do you have anything else to No, add? thank you for inviting me. This was great. Um, All right. I always love working with you guys and if we can help any of your clients out, we'd be happy. Thank you again for coming to our channel. We bring new videos to you every week. So look out for the next one and the next member of the team. Please comment, subscribe, and share with your family members. And next information will be in the description box. Thank you for coming to our channel. See you next week.